Hi, I've been asked to do animals and pastels for you all today and I thought I'd go through some of the basic lessons I teach about drawing animals. I have this, my handout about how to draw birds. I found every time I drew a bird it didn't quite come out right. So one way of actually dealing with uh, drawing curved shapes, doing uh, drawing an animal means that you're almost doing a portrait. Um, and if it goes wrong, my seagull would look like a duck. So I developed this technique of turning straight lands into curves. And I think I've mentioned this to you while we do our life drawing. <clears throat> and you can see here, I've got a little scribble of a vague bird shape. And then just to really analyze what these curves are doing, you just use straight lines. This would apply to drawing anything really. Um, and it comes in when you're drawing, doing life drawing. And also when you're trying to draw a particular animal, particularly horses, try that for a laugh, uh, that you can actually analyse what they look like by looking at the what those curves do. There's all sorts of anatomy going on under there, breast bones and breast meat and wings and things, just to get that accuracy. Uh, <clears throat> so straight lines into curves is a very useful technique. And I think I have mentioned Chuck Jones. If you look at his cartoons of Bugs Bunny, you'll find a lot of straight lines in there because it gives a curve more dynamism. I hope you can take this on board when you're drawing something more elaborate. But today I'm going to be drawing this rather nice lion. I found him, uh, he's from an old calendar, I think, and I trail him around on my art classes. But you can see he's got this wonderful fur. So what I'm going to do is draw it on a toned paper. This is kind of darkish, uh, mid-tone paper. It's kind of a maroon colour, and I'm hoping that will work. Um, so I didn't want brown. I have brown here. And again, that's probably the right tone, but it's not the right colour because it just be all end up being brown. So I've chosen this nice maroon. It does seem to be my favourite colour for doing most things. And I'm going to start drawing my lion. <clears throat> um, I didn't want to do kittens and my cat won't sit still. I didn't want to do dogs because um, our dog died last year and I really don't want to draw a picture of her at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to go on and start uh, blocking in with pastels. I've got my pastels here, various. Uh, so I've picked out a few of the colours I might need. And I tend to keep the colours I use in a separate place because it's hard to find them if you never put them back in the right place. So I've got whites and browns and uh, some oranges in here. Um, and I've picked out, uh, these are my lovely, uh, they're called darks, they're actually unison, they're very soft, but you can see sometimes you just don't have that right colour with pastels, so getting a set of darks, I think Mr Lawrence was selling sets of darks of Rembrandts for quite cheap actually, so it's useful to add those to your kit, and I've also got this is just a standard, uh, this is Jackson's own pastels, but the inscribe are pretty similar. They're rather hard, but they do the job. They're not bad. They're not too powdery. If you buy really cheap pastels, you find yourself covered in uh, chalk dust. So uh, get a good quality pastel. Well, the inscribes are good. They're about £10 for a reasonable number. So I'm going to start my lion. And I, do, I would do this the same way I would tackle a... A portrait of a person so I'm really trying to get his likeness he does look like the MGM lion so I'm just going to go on and block in the general shape with charcoal he goes over here um, and you see it it's like doing a portrait you have to get that likeness um, and it probably goes over there so I'm blocking that in and I use charcoal because it's so nice and erasable this is willow charcoal not anything black uh, you can rub out pastels, but they can tend to smudge. So I want to get the basics in there uh, before I start adding pastels. So there's his nose. Uh, well, not his nose. This central thing that runs down to his nose. And you realise, again, those straight lines, looking at the straight line of his nose. So you can't just go plonk. He's got a rather magnificent nose. It just reminds me of all those Disney lines. There we go. And then down here, and of course, he's just a big cat, really. So he's got this nice cat mouth. Oh, dear, that's not a bit big. And as usual, my drawing's got bigger. But I will keep going. And then you want to think about the anatomy underneath. So think of a, a skull. So he'd have his, his eye sockets are here. Um, and you can just see this one. He's got an eyebrow going over here and up to here. Oh, dear, no, none out of paper. Never mind. Uh, over here. And he's got something going on there. 
I think the eye is in the wrong place. And again, so I can just rub out the charcoal really easily. It all disappears. Uh, and he's looking okay. And then again, with cats, they have this rather magnificent sort of tear duct that almost um, defines their eye. And I'm just going to follow down from the nose to where this eye is. And it's a round ball inside a socket. So you want to think about that. And then he's got eyebrows over here. And his mane is over here. I think it's what's happening here. And I think he's got a cheekbone under there. And all this lovely fur here. Uh, up here. And a rather good lion, isn't it? Great stuff. And what I'm going to do now, it may seem a bit sacrilegious, I'm just going to wipe most of that off with my hand. You can use a tissue if you're a tidy person. And I'm going to start thinking about adding the fur. I'm just doing a quick look to see what's happening here. So he's got an eye here, which is disappearing around the corner. Not that different from a person, really. <coughs> and then I'm going to take some light colours. So I've got my light beiges. I'm going to take, this is kind of a, a light yellow ochre. And I'm going to go in there and add some fur. And the good thing about uh, using pastels with animals is uh, that you can actually follow the fur. And I'm hoping in the fullness of time, I'm there some paper will poke through too. So I'm just going here and looking at what's going on. There's a lot of fur over here, doing furry things. And over here, what the fur is doing. So that's just my first strokes. I might go in and add some blocking in of colour because there's quite a lot going on there. So I'm just going to use the side of the pastel to catch where the lightest bits are. And over here, I think I'm finding this. This looks very yellow on this paper, which is just as well because it is yellow. I'm just blocking in. And then I'm going to <clears throat> pick up my charcoal again and see if I can define those eyes. Because the eyes, it's like with people, if you get the eyes wrong, it's all wrong. So I really want to get those eyes right and right in the right place. So I can work around them. And then we've got his nice nose. I tend to use char charcoal for darkness when doing pastels. Because again, it's not as black as a back pastel would be. So it has, uh, and it's very easily erasable. And with pastel, sometimes when you want to get that real dark colour, you want to, um, <clears throat> you, you can actually layer up colour on top of your charcoal, and that should work fine. Um, so I'm just catching a few darks here, and then he's got his mane over here. And then I'm going to pick up a lighter colour. I think this is actually white, but I just want to get a few lighter areas. Whoa! I've got a variety of different pastels here and I've just found out that one is fantastically soft, which is good. So I'm just going in here with the white and you can see the white seems quite startling uh, on this dark paper. So I'm just going to go in and add some white areas. It's mainly so I can find my way around the picture. It's got a bit of white there, a bit of white there and a bit of white here. And I probably should leave it to uh, use it at the end as a sort of highlighting thing. So I'm just grabbing colours where I can. So I've got quite a nice, ooh, that's kind of orange, that one. Maybe a bit too orange, but I'm going to layer it in anyway. Little bits of his mane. The nice thing about pastels, and I'm a big fan of them, and I'm always complaining I don't do enough work in pastels, is that you layer up colour on the paper. Um, and I'm just going to look for a softer pastel in a nice yellow ochre colour, which is here. So I'm just, oh, that's better. That's more like a Naples yellow, kind of like, almost like an off-white. So what I'm going to do, and as I said, one reason I chose this picture, because of all the wonderful hair or fur, so I can go in there and layer up <clears throat> the colour and actually almost put the fur on hair by hair. I think I might need to get a darker brown going on here. But this is quite good to mush into the white I've already put on and add these areas so I can find my way around my own drawing. 
Um, and then I need a better brown. Here we are, let's try that one. No, that's not bad. It might be a bit of a gingery line by the time we finish, but so I'm just following what this fur is doing. And again, at this point, I'm using the side of the pastel. I'm add a bit more mane going on there. And add various areas to it. And you can see, so I can actually tone down that white quite easily by putting this colour on top. And then he's got a little hair here. So I'm blocking in at the moment. You can see that... Uh, you can see his bone structure here. I wonder if he's a bit of an old lion because he's got slightly sunken cheeks. I've got rather a fiendish yellow here. Oh, that's about right, the colour. So uh, these are the uh, the Jackson's Art half sticks. So you get a good uh, selection of colours uh, for not very much money. I think they're only about £10 if they've got any left. So I'm just going in and I'm following what his fur is doing. And he's got some eyebrows and he's got gingery eyebrows. So this is when it's useful to have the colours that you're using in one place. So you can just grab them where you want them. And I'm going to do his gingery eyebrows. And I'm going to work on this. And I'm going to brown a brown for that bit, I think. So I've got, ooh, looking at this tone, I thought this colour would be all right, but it's more or less the same tone as the paper. So that's not working well. So by trial and error, hopefully you'll get there. Maybe a few of those in there. So a bit of a more neutral colour there. And I think I might go a little bit mad and use a purple just to pack it up. So I'm going to just block in some purple where the shadows are so they can build up. It makes it more interesting than just being sort of darker brown. Put a bit in here. Ooh. Um, and try to catch what's happening with his anatomy. So you're layering up colours. So I'm going to go back in here with my furry colour. So I've got this nice furry colour. Maybe that one. And build up the fur here. And I'm just doing little strokes and I'm trying to follow what the fur does. Up there. Ooh, I need a darker brown. And I think I established that wasn't a darker brown. Try this one. So I just need, this is quite a dark, chunky brown. And I'm just going to layer that on top. Because where the shadows are, it isn't actually darker brown, it's just in shadow. So you want to keep uh, the colours kind of zingy, and that's why I use that purple. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of this area is actually defining what his chin's up to. So I might add some of this charcoal just to bring that down a bit. So blocking in, it's like underpainting. Ooh, look. And I've just noticed he's got this wonderful bit of mane poking around there. So I just want to add some of those bits. And it's quite nice to be able to lean back and have a look at what you're up to. And um, thinking that, well, that's a very exciting stage of a drawing or a painting. And remembering that, always leave a painting 10% undone. Because sometimes you can uh, kill it. And uh, this has a certain freshness, which I might go on to kill, who can say? I've got little bits of fur there. I'm not going to worry too much about accuracy at this point. Um, oh dear, I was having a bit of a bad hair day. But I can use this nice dark brown and go in there and add some more hair and there's something happening here. And here you can see that it's this gingery mane that is actually defining the shape of his head. So I might put a little bit there because I want, again, this mane to define the whiteness of his muzzle. And again, we've got all this lovely, very dark mane. In fact, I can just put this picture for a sec. We want to get his general shape, which I suppose is sort of like this. And I'm going to go on and add more little dark, more hairs <clears throat> building up over time. So I suppose one of the interesting, most interesting things about him is his features. So I'm just going to go in 
and start looking and you can see that you just start to see by looking and by drawing doing an observational drawing or something you understand it much better John Ruskin was a big fan of that drawing to understand nature and I'm just going to grab some of those colors block them in maybe I should block in that a bit too so I'm looking at Adding the sort of lion type colours, that's a bit more of a khaki, yeah. And if you notice, I'm not smudging. Uh, because smudging, and you lose the nice area of your, um, your strokes, and by smudging you will uh, lose the energy of your drawing. So that's why I'm against smudging. I'm just coming up here. So I've got these various sort of ochres and browns. That's almost a greeny one. I want to catch what's going on up there. Layering up that nice fur. Ooh, I forgot my gingery eyebrow. Yeah, maybe that's not quite the right ginger. Let's try this one. Um, and don't get too high band in details and try not to use the rubber. You can rub out things with pastels, but it's not uh, ideal because you uh, you can smudge the pastels, which make um, it look a bit odd. So I'm just going to put a few little features in here, like his whiskers. And then I'm going to layer, start layering up, start bringing his face together a bit. So I'm layering up this off-white here, which is really is quite light. And again, I can almost put, well, I would say in each individual hair on, but I, I wouldn't if I were you. So I'm just going in there, trying to get those nice, um, his nice muzzle depicted, but it's going around into shadow. But here you can see how the, the fur changes colour. So I'm just adding some areas in there like that to persuade uh, the view of your drawing that the fur is changing colour. Uh, I'm just going to go in here with a few darker strands, although that turns out to be exactly the same colour as the paper, which is quite useful for when you're uh, trying to correct a mistake. Oh, that's rather nice colour. Uh, that's kind of a greeny grey. So I'm going to go in there and add another layer of that for the shadows. So we've got here, we've got some nice shadows which almost define his face. And just going on and try and follow the direction of the of the fur and what it's up to and catching the different colors when you need to and over here it's a bit lighter and that's a bit gingerier so i'm going to go in here and add those ginger bits and that needs a bit of the yellow ochre on top i think And I'm going to start defining the eyes. The eyes are always, always the most important bit because that's uh, sort of windows of the soul and all that. So I want to get those colours right. Oh dear, that's a rather light one, isn't it? Let me chuck that back because it keeps coming back and annoying me. Let's try this one. Whoa, that's a bit red. Here's these gingery eyebrows. And I'll add a little bit of lightness here. And here. And uh, lines just being big cats. If you've got a cat, you can see the same pattern of fur on your cat. It will be exactly the same. And I found it quite useful, although I'm not doing a tabby cat. Um, if you've got a tabby cat, if you just paint its stripes, you will have a lightness. I'm just going in here with this dark brown. He's looking very strange. Very human, in fact, isn't he? Um, this is this very soft white. So I'm just blinging up some of the lighter areas so you get a bit more of a contrast 
Um, and then I'm going to use the charcoal again, go back in and see if I can do the eyes and the muzzle. So it's very dark here. And again, when you're faced with natural shapes like that, rather than thinking, oh my God, I've got to draw that shape. So if you think of it in terms of straight lines, so it goes down and then it curves round his muzzle and then goes down. And if you notice on cats and dogs, they do have this centre line that runs down their nose. This side, you can't really see very much. But this side is really quite dark and I'm not going to use black, I'm going to use charcoal. And I am going to smudge that a bit, but don't, don't go crazy now. Uh, and then there's a bit of shape here. And I might just define the edge of his head here with a bit of dark charcoal. And also this muzzle. It's really for my benefit, not necessary to help the drawing go on, but just so I know what's happening. And you can see it does layer up quite nicely to where it should be. Uh, to, so I'm to I can tone down these colours by just adding a bit of charcoal if the colours got a little bit too vivid. vivid. Add a bit in there. And it's got this almost laugh line, so you seem like. Coming down here. Ooh, I suppose I could do that bit. <clears throat> so here we've got this nice... Ah, that's far too yellow. Uh, quite useful to test what colour you're going to use. That's a bit on the orange side, but it might do for a bit of mane. I've got it in my hand. And I was going to work on this. This is kind of like an off-white, but unfortunately I put blue in there, of course. Um, or purple, very purpley blue. It's all coming out green, so I think I need something a bit less yellow in there to understand what's happening here. So we've got his muzzle and he's got this almost benign smile on it, although I don't think he's probably very benign. It is looking rather like a man in a, a lion suit, but if I think I will work on the mane a bit more. I suppose I, what I could do is demonstrate to you, if I could find my rubber, I'm temporarily mislaid um, how to rub them out, but I will crack on and define what this mane is doing. So I'm building up the layers and there's a little kind of bit that's catching the sun and then this goes into, I'm now thinking of as his laugh lines and then individual pairs doing this. Just use the same colour again. Let's try that one. Oh, that's better. So can you see it? So I'm just following the hair. I'm not worrying about mad every individual hair and where it is. I know some artists like to do that, but life is too short. And I've got some more mane down here and up here. And I need a cool off-white to catch what his fur's doing over here. So it's just turning the corner, this, um, the light here. And it's actually highlighting his little smile. And then right over here. And up here. What I might do, oh, I must show you how to do the eyes. So eyes are very tricky. And of course they have an eyes like a cat, but I can see, I don't know if you can, it's very small, that it is just, just this nice round shape within here. And it really is quite yellow. And it's just catching a bit of light there, but the rest is in shadow, which is almost green. So I need a greeny, oh, I that one will do. So I'm just going to use this grey green just here, trying to catch what his eyes are doing and then I can just see a little bit of his eye on the other side of his face. So there's a little touch here and then he's going to need some pupils. Um, so I'm going to go in and model a bit with the charcoal because it goes out like this. And then it's disappearing, and he's got his tiny little pupils. 
there. And then he's got some shadow that's running down here. And I'm just going to add a bit more dark to that and then work on his muzzle a bit. And this very benign smile. Uh, and, and I think rather than you having to watch me working away at it, um, I'd like to just stop this video and come back to you in a few minutes when I've done a bit more to the main.